Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking tunnel effect using Adobe After Effects and Trap Code Tower. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. 1920 by 1080 pixels would be fine, 30 FPS and a duration of about 10 to 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we have that, then what we need to do is we need to create a new solid. And for this solid, I'm just going to label it Tau. And obviously what we need to do is we need to search for the effect called Trap Code Tau. Now, just a reminder that Trap Code Tau is a paid plugin from Red Giant. So if you do not have it, please download it from Red Giant before continuing on with this tutorial. So now that that's out of the way, what we need to do is we need to edit this a little bit. So we're gonna come down here to the segment and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna change the segments here. And you can see what happens here. You get some really cool shapes happening. Now I'm gonna keep this as a square, but you're free to put any other shape that you want. Now, so I'm gonna set the segments to four. The sides, I'm gonna probably leave it at three, but you can see there are some cool effects that happen when you increase the sides. And maybe we'll come back to that a little bit later. But once we have that, then we can close up segment and we can go to the repeat paths. And we're just gonna open up the first repeater. So the first thing that we need to do here is I'm just going to increase the repetition. So I'm gonna bump this up to maybe something like, I don't know, 60 or so. Now, depending on your PC, this number might be a bit too high. And if it is, you might have to drop the resolution to half or something like that. So once we've got the repetitions up, the next thing that we can do is we can change this value here, the R1 world position X. We'll just change that to zero. So now we're back to our square again. So now what we are going to do is we are going to go to the R1 world position Z. So R1 world position Z, and we're just going to increase this. And what we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna animate this. So I'm gonna set it at 70 to start, and then I'm gonna hit the stopwatch, and I'm just gonna move forward to the end of the composition and just bring that up to about 200, 250 or so. Um, the bigger the number, the faster that it will move through. So I think that's looking pretty nice. It's pretty slow, but we'll also animate it with a camera later on anyway. So it's just a little bit of extra animation happening there. So I think that looks pretty good. The next thing that we need to do is we need to come down to the R1 random, uh, which is down here, size Y. We're just gonna increase that a bit. So maybe we'll just put that to about 10. Cool, so now that's, pretty much done for the repeat paths. Now what we need to do is we need to go into the fractal displacement. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna change the amplitude. So we're gonna bring that up. Now you can see what happens here. You can create really cool, unique tunnels by increasing that, but we're not gonna go that crazy. So I'm just gonna leave it at a, you know, a number just a little bit like 30, something like that. And the frequency, again, you can even animate that and get some really cool looks. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it down so there's not too much happening there. So maybe somewhere in between like 50 or even like 45, something like that. And if you play through that, you can see that there's, you know, like it's not completely straight. And I think that looks pretty good too. So anyways, so moving on, so that's pretty much our tunnel done. Now we're just gonna add some color. And you know, the good thing about Trapco Tower is when you go into material and lighting and you go into the image based lighting effects. Now I've done this in a few other tutorials, but some of the built-in environment stuff is amazing. And you know, you just have to go through them to see which ones, you know, actually work. Um, Sunset Field normally is probably my go-to, but in this case, I'm gonna choose this dark industrial kind of lighting effect. And, uh, and we'll fix it up and we'll make it look a little bit better. But, um, but yeah, we'll just run with that for now. So now we have this black part down here at the bottom and what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna turn it into a white solid down there. So I'm just gonna create a new solid and I'm just gonna label it white solid and I'm just gonna put it underneath the towel over here and now you can see I've got this white area here. 
So now if I go down to the visibility, now we can change some of these things. So we can change this value here and this will now, you can see what's happening here. It's creating this kind of like fog shine thing and it's looking pretty good. And I'll just set this to about 3000. And then for the fog end, I'll set that to about, let's say 14, maybe 400, something like that. So it gives off a little bit of light. And so now we've got this cool, unique kind of tunnel thing happening there. And I think that's looking really nice. But to make it look even nicer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, we are going to search for another trap code or another red giant plugin, which is called Shine. And Shine, you can see what happens straight away. You can, you see all the colors happening and it's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come down to colorize and I'm just gonna search for the effect, which is spirit. So that gives off that kind of purple vibe and you can see what happens here. So all the lighting that happens uh, over there, you can see it kind of spinning off and that's the whole point of Shine. And I think uh, Red Giants plugin does a really good job at doing something like that. So now once we have that, we're just going to, maybe we'll increase the ray lengths. Maybe we'll bring it up to about six or maybe even five. Nah, six was pretty good. So that just means how much of this light is kind of going through. So now once we've got our adjustment layer, the next thing that we can do is we can add a camera. So I'm just gonna right click, add a new camera. I'm just gonna run with a 35 mil camera over there. Just gonna press okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a null object. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to parent the camera to the null object and make sure that the null object is set to a 3D layer. So if you don't see this, just click toggle switches and you should be able to see it like that. So now what we can do here is we can now add some rotation happening to this, um, you know, tunnel. So if I just open up the null settings and go into the transform uh, options over here, you can now move the Z rotation. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the stopwatch on the Z rotation. Maybe I'll start it at a different value. So maybe, maybe I'll start it, you know, somewhere like that. And then I'm just going to move forward in time and just increase that value, you know, depending on how fast you wanna rotate it. So maybe I'll go to about, you know, 180, something like that. So that should give a fairly slow moving forward rotation. And I think that's looking pretty good, but you can obviously change it to whatever you want. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the camera settings and I'm gonna play around with some of the camera options. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna change this zoom. So I'm gonna bring the zoom down to about 1000. And now we've got this kind of zoomed out uh, tunnel. So it makes it look like there's a lot more happening. We can also increase the depth of field or we can turn that on. So now once we turn the depth of field on, we're just gonna play with the aperture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slowly slide this until we get a little bit of blurriness just on the edges down here. So maybe somewhere like maybe 75 uh, pixels, something like that. And then you can play around with the focus distance as well. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase that to maybe let's say 5,000. And now you've just got a little bit of blurriness happening as the tunnel is going through. So now that's looking pretty good. You've got some reflections going from the nice image based lighting from Trap Code and everything is pretty good. The final thing that we can do here is we can just add another new adjustment layer. And I'm just gonna put that right at the top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for an effect called Curves. And I'm just gonna create a simple S bend here. So, I'll just make it look a little bit more dramatic. And once you're happy with that, the final thing you can do is add another new adjustment layer and I'll put that on top of everything. And I'm just gonna search for the effect called noise. And I'm just gonna bump up the noise to about, let's say 8%, something like that. So it's just a little bit grainy over there. And yeah. The, that's about it. The only other thing that I had in my video is I had all these um, dust particles and things like that, but that was just from stock footage anyways. 
So anyways, guys, uh, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something. I hope you learned how to create these uh, cool looking tunnels uh, using trap code. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.